Hello all and greetings from the Martin Luther, the 2022 Martin Luther King Jr. Celebration Committee. I am in awe of all of the beautiful faces that we see today on the screen young and old. I'm excited to see all of the students. Uh, I do want to acknowledge our interpreter that is on to assist our um, Spanish-speaking community members. Thank you, Mr. Garcia. We appreciate you greatly. We really strive this year um, to really be inclusive of everyone. We want to welcome you all. It is not a perfect situation. Um, and we had to make a lot of tough decisions, but we did not want to be remiss in including everyone in this celebration. Uh, Dr. King was for all people, red, black, yellow, and white. 
you name it, all the colors of the rainbow. And that's what we see here today. Everyone is represented. Thank you so much for logging on with us. Looks like we almost have 100. We, oh, 99. What an amazing turnout, Yakima. We also want to thank our many sponsors, donors. We've had a lot go on over the weekend. Uh, I we want to recognize you'll hear from pretty quick. Assistant Mayor Holly Cousins and Councilwoman Byers. Um, and we just appreciate everyone that is here. We had a wonderful church service, first time virtual MLK church service yesterday. It was amazing for all those who logged on. People are still logging on. We've hit over 100. So that tells us a lot about Yakima. Um, everyone loved the vision and mission of Dr. King. We hope that you enjoy what um, we have for you today. And it will be on uh, the OIC Facebook for viewing later. Uh, definitely invite those who weren't able to log on today and enjoy. Thank you again. And thank you to the MLK Jr. Celebration Committee, those committee members who spent hours in helping us organize. We hope that you enjoy um, the program. Bye-bye. privilege to be the master of ceremonies for the 37th annual Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. celebration here in Yakima. In these current times, peace, civility, and social justice continue to be an area of focus. Dr. King laid the groundwork and established a framework of creating positive change in one's community. Today, we take time to recognize, celebrate, and continue Dr. King's dream to ensure justice and equity for all people in the 21st century. Dr. King recognized the importance education had in the dream, and he laid it out well when he said the function of education is to teach one to think intensely and to think critically. Intelligence plus character, that is the goal of true education. At this time, I would like to introduce Dr. Trimble to lead us in the opening prayer. Amen. We gather here this afternoon from all the corners of Yakima. All faith. We want to pause here a moment for those who have lost their lives COVID 19. We want to remember this. We want to remember the family. And that does want to pause for a moment outside of the back. Oh God, our Heavenly Father, we thank Thee for this golden opportunity this afternoon to come to Thee, the only true and living God of the universe. We come to Thee today in humbleness. We pray, oh God, that You will continue to bless and keep us as we journey 
on this journey. As we come in remembrance, in honor of one, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Pray, oh God, we thank you for his life, for the message that he brought, not only to the United States, but his message all around the world. Teach us, oh God, to love one another. Grant us an open mind, responsible hearts, that we may strengthen each other as we drink from that spiritual fountain of everlasting love. Keep us forever in your perfect peace. Help us to walk together. Help us to pray together, sing together, and live together as one people. No matter what area of life we come from, no matter what tone of our skin, no matter what we're going through, Pray, oh God, that you will continue to keep us, grant us that joy that all of us feel and experience the taste of prosperity. In his name we pray, your Son and his Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Reverend Trimble. At this time, to lead us in the land acknowledgement, I would like to introduce the superintendent of the Yakima School District, Mr. Trevor Green. The Yakima School District has enjoyed a growing partnership with the Yakima Nation, and it brings me great joy to share our land acknowledgement uh, for the uh, recognition of the land that we rest upon at this time and do so on behalf of the Yakima School District, but also on behalf of the celebration organizational ceremony uh, of the Martin Luther King Jr. celebration. Today, the schools and the boundaries of the city of Yakima rest on the ancestral lands of the 14 confederated tribes and bands of the Yakima Nation. The people of Yakima Nation inhabited more than 12 million acres across Adams, Benton, Chelan, Douglas, Franklin, Grant, Kittitas, Klickitat, and Yakima counties. Today, we honor those native peoples who are tied to the land through history, legends, and culture. We acknowledge their descendants who live in the world today. We thank the caretakers of this land who have lived here and continue to live here since time immemorial. An acknowledgement is a simple, powerful way to show respect and a step towards correcting the stories and practices that erase indigenous people's history and culture. It also honors the truth. As the Yakima School District, we will continue to build upon the relations with the Yakima Nation, and we know that the city will continue to do so as well. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Green. At this time, we lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance in both English and ASL. I'd like to introduce Sage Peterson and Damien Mendez from Whitney Elementary.
We're having some technical difficulties, so I'm going to go ahead and next we're going to introduce uh, Jesse Avellino and the Dolly Vargas from Barge Lincoln Elementary to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance in Spanish. Niños, uno, dos y tres. Yo prometo yo prometo a la, la bandera de los Estados Unidos de América y a la República que representa una Nación bajo Dios indivisible con libertad y justicia para todos. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, the two republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. Obviously, doing this virtually live is uh, we're going to run into a few issues. So, thank you for your patience and understanding. Uh, at this time, I would like to introduce um, AC Davis High School teacher, uh, Mr. Noel Cisneros, to lead us, lead us in the national anthem. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hail at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars to the perilous fight, or the ramparts we watch were so gallantly streaming, and the rockets red glare, the bombs bursting in air, gave proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say does that star-spangled banner yet wave for the land of the free And the home of the brave. Up next, we have Mr. Tyler Bochamp, who's going to lead us in the Negro National Anthem. <laughs> Lift every voice and sing Till earth and heaven rings Ring with the harmonies of liberty 
let our rejoicing rise high as the listening skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is one. Thank you to both Mr. Nero and Mr. Coachamp. Well done. Up next, we have Assistant Mayor Paul Cousins to lead this agreement. Thank you. Thank you so much for inviting me here today to be part of such an important celebration. I appreciate each and every one of you for joining us via Zoom in this unprecedented times that we have. As we celebrate the birthday of Dr. King and share his dream, let's honor him by continuing his work, his legacy. His dream was not meant for him, but it was meant for all of us. Even though we face difficult times today, and even tomorrow, his dream is still deeply rooted as the American dream. He said that it was his dream that one day that we will rise up and live out the true meaning of the American creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal. We still have so much more work to do, but we can start by honoring Dr. King Jr. today and every day by taking his legacy and living out his dream by teaching each other equality and celebrating our diversity, by not judging someone by the color of their skin, but by the contents of their character. I stand here today on Zoom <laughs> as a Jewish woman who had parents who marched with Dr. King. I was fortunate enough to be raised by parents who knew the value of the civil rights movement and who took part in it, who got in good trouble. I'm aware that not every child had that, but growing up in Yakima in an environment having Miss Esther Huey and Mr. Steve Mitchell as my mentors, I grew up knowing and honoring Dr. King's legacy. The best way to find yourself is to lose yourself in service of others. Dr. King said that one day, all God's children will be able to sing with new meaning, my country tis of thee. Sweet land of liberty, from every mountainside, let freedom ring. Let freedom ring from the snow-capped Rockies of Colorado. Let freedom ring from the stone mountains of Georgia and let freedom ring from the streets of Yakima. On behalf of the entire Yakima City Council and the Yakima community, welcome to this year's Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. celebration. Thank you. Thank you for those words. Up next to read the proclamation is Councilwoman Patricia Byer. Good afternoon. And I want to start by um, uh, saying, giving my personal greetings to Reverend Trimble because you are just so dear to my heart. And uh, to let Esther Huey know that it was such a wonderful article in this morning's paper telling of her personal history and her struggles and her success in her life here in Yakima. I'm always amazed by all the service that you have indeed, um, by the wishes of Dr. Luther King, Martin Luther King, I'm sure, provided our city. So uh, thank you so very much. And now on behalf of the city, I'm going to read the proclamation for today. This is the City of Yakima Proclamation. 
Whereas Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. devoted his life to advancing equality, social justice, and opportunity for all, and challenged all Americans to participate in the never ending work of building a more perfect union. And whereas Dr. King's teachings can continue to guide and inspire us in addressing challenges in our communities and the King Holiday and Service Act enacted in 1994 designated the King Holiday as a national day of volunteer service. And whereas since 1994, millions of Americans have been inspired by the life and work of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. to serve their neighbors and communities on the King Holiday and serving on the King Holiday is an appropriate day to honor Dr. King, meet local and national needs, bring citizens together and strengthen our communities and nation. And whereas Dr. King Day of Service is the only federal holiday commemorated as a national day of service and offers an opportunity for Americans to give back to the communities on the holiday and make an ongoing commitment of service throughout the year. And whereas Dr. Uh, Dr. King Day of Service uh, projects are being organized by a wide variety of nonprofit and community organizations, educational institutions, public agencies, private businesses, and other organizations across the nation. And whereas each of us can and must contribute to making our communities better with the increased opportunity for all citizens and citizens of Yakima, Washington, have the opportunity to participate in events throughout our city on the King Day of Service, January 17th, 2022. Now, therefore, for the city of Yakima does hereby proclaim Martin Luther King Jr. holiday as a day of service and call upon the people of Yakima to pay tribute to the life and works of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. through participation in the community service projects on Dr. Martin Luther King Day and throughout the year, dated on this fourth day of January, 2022. And let me say that while this is a nationally recognized day of service, um, I think that we all need to 365 days a year, keep our community in mind and find ways that we can serve and help one another. That's always been a uh, part of my love of Yakima is how well we all do this together. So I just wanted to thank you for this opportunity. It's good to see all of you. God bless you. Have a good day. Thank you, Mr. Byers, for your work. Up next, we have a couple of student speakers, one from Davis High School and one from Eisenhower High School. Uh, up first, we have uh, Cleopatra Cook from AC Davis High School. Good afternoon. In Martin Luther King Jr.'s time, there was discrimination then, the days before, and the days after. And yet, he still had a dream. A dream that, quote, one day this nation will rise up and live out the true meaning of its creed. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal. It is easy in our society to forget our dreams. When headlines flood with discrimination, inequality, and inequity, the last thing we think to do is to dream of a new world. But a leader like Dr. King paves the way to have the possibility, the will, and the fight for a dream. And he has inspired many people from young to old, including me, to have the possibility, the will, and the fight for a dream. He has inspired me to digest the injustices that plague this world today and to dream for a change. Not just to dream, but to speak. To speak up about what happens in our schools from the highest to lowest level. To speak up about how our institutions and practices aren't always equitably practical. To speak up about how to make a change and how to make that change step by step and day by day into something feasible and tangible. Our society has come along back when Dr. King pressed forward in the civil rights movement. Our society still has a long journey ahead, but I speak to this with the hope and faith that this Monday no longer serves as a three-day weekend, no longer and never has it served as a day off from work or school. But I speak to this with the hope and faith that this Monday serves as a remembrance and a reminder that as one dreamt of a righteous world, that we seek change and continue this dream to one day make it reality. Martin Luther King Jr. has inspired and influenced many, and I speak to this that he will to you as he has to me. 
Thank you and God bless. Yeah, Patrick, well done. Thank you for those words uh, representing David High School City of Yakima and young people this evening. Thank you very much. Up next, we have a student speaker from Eisenhower High School, uh, El Beto Alameda. The ultimate measure of a man is not where he stands in the moment of comfort and con convenience, but where he stands at a time at times of challenge and controversy, which I find to be one of Martin Luther King's greatest quotes. I am a Bethel alumna and I'm a sophomore at Ike. Like his quote, during the controversial time of the civil rights movement, Dr. King stood up for what he believed in. His actions not only affect me, but the lives of everyone in America, specifically the lives of people of color. His actions have allowed me and people like me to be able to attend the schools of their choice, to go to the public places that we want, and to be able to apply for jobs that we desire. Not only did he affect the past, but he is currently affecting the future. Due to his bravery and determination to speak out and stand up for what he believes in, he has inspired the kids of this generation to do the same. Our generation has created movements like the Black Lives Matter, like Black Lives Matter that demands black people be equally treated in the justice system. Though Dr. King made his mark over 50 years ago, his impact is still felt today. Thank you. Much. For those that are unsure about where we stand with hope and opportunity, um, go talk to the young person. Hope and opportunity is alive and well in our community. Okay. Up next, uh, we have the recognition of the Lee Pageant Food Drive um, and the award that goes along with it. So I'd like to introduce Ms. Heather Hasty, principal at AC Davis High School, and Mr. Eric Diner, principal at Eisenhower High School. Good afternoon, everyone. Appreciate your time today. As was said earlier, these are definitely unprecedented times. At this time, we're actually extending our food drive so that we can maximize the opportunity for donations and for our students. We've had quite a few snow days. We're having remote learning, and we want to make sure that we have enough time to collect as much as we possibly can for the civic opportunity. We will be putting out a press release after next week with the winner of this award. Thank you. Thank you, Mrs. Tasty. Up next, uh, to introduce our keynote speaker for the day is Honorable Elizabeth, Elizabeth Stoops. Good afternoon. Thank you everybody for being here and a special thanks to the organizers for this event, for pivoting in these unprecedented times and allowing us still to celebrate this national holiday. It's my privilege to introduce Commissioner Sonia rodriguez Fruit. She was appointed to the bench about a year ago in 2021. Before joining the bench, she ran a successful law practice, focusing on family law and representing vulnerable adults and children. Commissioner Rodriguez True is the first Latina woman to serve on the Yakima bench. She is a trailblazer. She was also the first Latina woman to serve on the Yakima City Council. Commissioner Rodriguez True credits her education as transformative in her life. She graduated from the University of Washington for both undergrad and law school. Her mother knew education was important and chose to enroll her in the Annie Wright schools in Tacoma for elementary and high school. Her teachers mentored and encouraged her. A shout out for all the educators who are here today. You do change lives. Now, Commissioner Rodriguez True is one of Annie Wright School's distinguished alumni. I first met Commissioner Rodriguez True when we were both new lawyers. We had to learn how to litigate cases and work with our clients. We also had to learn the court system and how to work with other lawyers and people in the justice system. 
And because we were new lawyers and women, we, had, we felt we had to work extra hard to earn our clients' confidence and credibility with the court. But Commissioner Rodriguez True, as a person of color, had more barriers. She experienced racism in ways that I never did. I had to learn that just because something didn't happen to me, it could still happen to someone else. It seems obvious, but it was an essential lesson to learn along the way. I had to learn how to be a reliable ally. But Sonia persevered. She is strong and brave, and she overcame. And along the way, she lifted other people up. She started a nonprofit in this together to address gang violence. She welcomed into her home over 20 children, not all at the same time, but still a lot of children um, have come through her house and have benefited from her warmth and hospitality and nurturing. She's helped hundreds of people find justice at court, protecting families, adolescents, and parents' relationship with their children. We have the privilege of working together now at Superior Court. Commissioner Rodriguez True is a hard worker and prepared for her cases. She listens. And she understands deeply how people find themselves in the situations that find them at court. I can tell you that diversity and representation matter. It's not just that our bench is beginning to look more like our community, that's important. It's also because she helps all of us have deeper insights into our own cases and she challenges our assumptions. It is a privilege to work with Commissioner Rodriguez True. I am constantly awed by her compassion and her courage. Please join me in welcoming Commissioner Rodriguez True as a keynote speaker. Well, thank you so much, Judge Tooch, for that warm introduction. Um, it has been a pleasure serving with you on the bench as well. And obviously our friendship for more than 20 years now. We're not that um, old. <laughs> It's an absolute honor, and I'm extremely humbled to give this uh, presentation. Um, let me just fix my, I, I'm a little off on Zoom here, so um, I would have definitely enjoyed seeing everybody in person, but I'm um, extremely, just really honored and privileged to give this presentation today. I really wish I could address you all in person, uh, and I am I would be remiss to not really hopefully challenge you uh, in the presentation that I'm gonna give today because I think that uh, um, while we enjoy celebrating Martin Luther King and while his legacy has been a great one, he also, part of his legacy has been to uh, remind our community and our society of a significant um, challenge that we face uh, on a daily basis in our country today. Uh, as, as Judge Tooch indicated, uh, my husband and I have helped a number of children over the years. And most of these children, I think all of these children have been children of color. And the experience has only strengthened the idea in our minds that uh, systemic racism is extremely and very much alive in our community today. We know firsthand what our young people face um, my husband and I enjoy living in the West Valley area and our children that we've had attend our local schools. And I can tell you that every single child in our household has experienced racism in our community. And we have had to learn how to help them understand what cannot be understood. I have experienced racism in school from being told a joke in a high school economics class about how many Hispanics it takes to accomplish a task. Um, by a teacher, to my second grader recently asking me why, why, and wondering why, why do the girls in her class say they do not want to play with her because she has dark hair. I could go on telling you countless examples. These experiences have also extended to other systems in our community. Uh, sort of the icing on the cake for me um, was just a, probably less than two years ago, uh, and so I had been an attorney at that time for more than, well, about 20 years. Um, I was driving one night to pick up one of our teenagers who was living with us at the time uh, from work at Olive Garden. It was, it was probably 1130. Um, this particular young man was black. And I decided to take one of our other teenagers who was living with us too um, on, the, on the drive too. And he was Latino. And on the way home, of course, I... I got pulled over. 
And I was pulled over by our local police. And I have to admit at that moment, I found myself overcome with fear because I was uncertain about what was gonna happen. And the officer came up to my car and I have I have a very nice car. And he asked me, he's like, whose car is this? And I politely informed him it was mine. And I gave him the information he was asking for. And he shined the light inside of the car and he shone it on the two teenagers who were with me. And he looked at me and he asked me, do you have any weed or alcohol in the car? And after some back and forth with him, he eventually uh, let us go. But on the way home, what I had to explain to the teenagers who were with me was um, why we were treated that way. And I, I, I can, could not explain it. And so they were, they were left upset about having to have had that experience. And then about a year ago, um, the police pulled into our driveway one Saturday morning, and I was pretty surprised because it was I was getting ready to leave for my Saturday morning yoga class. And the officer approached me and he said, ma'am, there's been a report of a suspicious looking young Hispanic male in your backyard. And I politely informed him that it was not necessary to respond to this call because that young Hispanic male that had been reported as suspicious actually lived there. And when I came to Yakima myself over 20 years ago, um, as a young lawyer, I was always mistaken for the interpreter and my Spanish by no means is great. And at one point, even for a truancy student, I needed to find a place to live when I came to Yakima. And I went to a local, very popular property management company. If I told you the name, you would immediately know who I was talking about. And the person from that property management company arranged a day for me to go and see some places to rent. And immediately took me to these really run down duplexes um, in our town. And I was wondering, I'm like, and I thought to myself, what, why would they think I would want to live here? Here I was being educated at one of the top 20 law schools in our country at the time, graduated lawyer, passed the bar exam, very successful. But yet when this property management company person saw me, they thought that I needed to live in one of the most rundown areas of our community. The other <clears throat> instance of racism I experienced was always when I was trying to kind of navigate the school system for my daughter. And I remember one time I joined the PTA of a local school district and I was sitting in a meeting and all of a sudden I heard, by the way, we have an, a, a policy this year of no Spanish speaking. There will be no Spanish speaking by any students. And I just was caught so off guard. And I thought, huh. And when I approached the principal later about this particular policy, because obviously it's wrong, he said, he started going and telling me a story about how previous to that he had been at the Highland School District and how before there were Mexicans, nobody liked soccer. But then after Mexicans, everyone enjoys soccer now. And I thought to myself, why in the world where, where are we? Why in the world are there these racial stereotypes that are just meeting me wherever I go? I'm not looking for them. They're meeting me where I'm at. I tried to put my daughter in childcare. I was constantly told, we don't accept subsidies, ma'am. Why would you assume I have a subsidy? I'm a lawyer. Whenever I put my daughter in school, the migrant the migrant liaison would always reach out to me. Mrs. Rodriguez, do you need our help? Because we can't imagine that someone with the last name of Rodriguez could possibly also be extremely high up in our community, a lawyer. 
we need to send, we are, our automatic thinking here is that we need to send the migrant liaison. <clears throat> she must be a laborer. In 2022, this many years after Martin Luther King wrote his letter from the Birmingham jail condemning the injustice of systemic racism, it is still alive and well in our community today. And this day, today, as Judge Truth said, almost marks, <clears throat> marks about a year since I've served on the Yakima County Superior Court bench. Reflecting on the historical moment for our community, the first woman of color appointed to the bench, the only current serving judicial officer of color in our entire county outside of tribal court, it is a defining moment, an enormous accomplishment for our for my career my, and my family. My maternal grandmother spent part of her childhood picking cotton in Texas, subject to a world that reminded her that she was not wanted. An outsider in her own country, signs surrounded her that said, no Negroes, no Mexicans, and no dogs. Later returning to California to pick oranges, she had dreams of going to college that she could never fulfill. She's still alive, just born a few years after Martin Luther King Jr. Approaching her 90s, she's the matriarch of our family. And when I was appointed to the bench, I was given two judicial robes with my initials sewn in them. And I gave her one as a reminder to her that the struggles that she's endured over her life were never in vain. So I'm extremely proud I'm proud of what I can stand for. I'm proud that I, I hope that I am example to children of color in our community that can look at me and say, I can be there. I can achieve my dream. I can get to where she is. This is the example that is important to me in my life, that anything is attainable. Yet in all of this, I am weary with carrying the burden of being the first one in more than one area. The injustice of being the only one, a reminder that we, our community of color, remains outsiders in so many ways. We continue to be excluded from places of leadership. Sadly, the exclusion is not isolated to the court system. Indeed, we are also missing in places of leadership in government, schools, colleges, healthcare, businesses, corporations, and any and all entities that hold any social, economic, and political power. This is the reality of our community and the lack of opportunity. And despite people of color being the majority, the majority in our county, being more than 60% of the student population at the Yakima Valley College, and more than 80% of the Yakima School District, somehow we continue to be excluded from these places. Let me tell you a story here to help us understand. Lily, my dear Lily, a 20 year old Latina student who lives with us, she's not related, but we met her a long time ago and we have tried to support and help for years. She has a dream a beautiful dream to be a pediatrician. She attends a local college and she's in her second year. She's earnestly pursuing her pre-med course of study. My husband and I have committed to helping Lily with any opportunity to achieve this dream. Lily has demonstrated nothing but commitment and discipline to overcome the natural challenges she endured in her life being the daughter of a single teen mom living in poverty. She told us many times that how she grew up, she thought her choices in life were gonna to be to work in a warehouse or to be a lunch lady because in the world she lived in, that's where she saw the Latinos. But then this dream of being a doctor so recently, Lily met with her advisor at college for advising day. 
a goal of advising day, my understanding is to plan classes for the next semester. And Lily shared with her advisor about her dream to be a doctor. Here is the opportunity. Please stop and realize that here is the opportunity many of us have in this moment to encourage, to help dreams become reality, because this is the only way things are going to change. Here's that moment. But instead, this particular advisor responded, what about nursing? Have you ever considered a career in nursing? And all at once, the disillusionment, the discouragement, and the diminishment of Lily's dream set in. And when she told me this story, she was filled with an extreme amount of self-doubt, telling me, maybe I should be a nurse instead and not be a doctor. Maybe I don't have what it takes to be a doctor because why wouldn't this lady have told me what I need to do to become a doctor? Crushing, but it was a dialogue that was familiar to me. For over 25 years ago, I heard the same message from an advisor at the University of Washington that caused me self-doubt and wondering why was I even dreaming big in the first place? In law school at the University of Washington, constant doubt about my qualification to be there was etched in my mind. At the time the school was being sued for reverse discrimination and as one of about 10 Latino students out of the entire student body at 140, I always asked, how were you able to get into this school? And it's that message, please hear me, it's that message of low expectation, doubt, you need to settle for less, that has kept our community of color out of leadership positions. Against odds, against odds, I have made it to be many firsts here in this community, and I love Yakima. I've been the first, I've I've been honored and privileged to be the first Latina Yakima City Council person, the first Latina to serve on the board of directors for Memorial Hospital, Yakima Federal, Rotary, the first Latina to serve as United Way chairperson, and now the first Latina appointed to the bench. But we grow weary of being first, seeing no one else around us in these places, especially about 60 years after the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. My fellow community members, we are called to serve each other in brother and sisterhood. We are called to care about one another. In his letter from the Birmingham jail, Martin Luther King was responding to fellow clergymen who were being critical of him at the time. Why did he care about what people were going through in Birmingham? Why did he put himself in the position to go to jail for people in Birmingham? He was not from Birmingham. He responded, we are caught in an inescapable network of mutuality tied in a single garment of destiny. Whatever affects one directly affects us all indirectly. And we must be concerned with the injustice of exclusion and systemic racism. There is no waiting here. When I bring this up in any situation I'm in, on a board, um, in any position I have, I'm always told it's gonna happen, change is gonna happen, but there is no waiting here. And when you're talking about the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, he believed there was no waiting. The injustice of the exclusion, the injustice of constantly being the one, the injustice of systemic racism must be addressed now. The status quo is unacceptable because it's unjust. And I wanna ask you today, I want us to ask each other, this is something I ask myself. This is something I live by. Are we doing what we can to elevate people, to encourage their dreams, 
to remove barriers, to put them first and yourself second, to use our privilege to give meaning to opportunity, to benefit our community as a whole? Or are we waiting? Are we waiting because we don't wanna be uncomfortable? Because we're waiting for the right time, the day that doesn't come? Are, is it difficult to interrupt the status quo? Are we waiting for somebody else to do it? Are we waiting for a time that will never come without our direct and unwavering action? For according to Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. in the same letter, he says, wait has almost always meant never. I call, I call for us to consider this challenge together today. Remember, the action that Dr. Martin Luther King at the, that was taken at the time was not popular. He was not liked for it. Many, including his own, his own supporters, thought he was extreme. People tried to hurt him and his family for what he was doing because he was willing and to take action to disrupt and question the status quo. If we are truly celebrating his legacy, it is worth our discomfort, the natural tension that must happen. He talks about it in the same letter, to come together to correct our local injustice of systemic racism. It's not whether it exists, it's what are we gonna do to make this a just and community for all. So I'm very honored to be here. Thank you very much. I appreciate you all listening and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you, Your Honorable Rodriguez Crew. We really appreciate you speaking here today. Up next, we have the Spirit of the Dream Award. This award recognizes individuals and organizations who exemplify Dr. King's dream, who have worked diligently to ensure, ensure social justice and equity are embedded in the fabric of our community. It is my pleasure to recognize the following organizations as recipients of the 2022 Spirit of the Dream Award. The first recipient, the Asian Pacific Islander Coalition, the Yakima Branch. Asian Pacific Islander Coalition brings together Asian Pacific Americans, including immigrants, refugees, and citizens to use their collective strength to empower each other and those within their diverse communities. They have been committed to connecting the values seen, heard, and felt in their communities and sharing their message to the larger political system that represents them at the city, county, and state level. APIC fully supports naturalize, register, and vote. APIC of Yakima is one of seven chapters that Asian Pacific Islander Coalition of Washington, affiliated with the Washington Community Coalition, Asian Counseling and Referral Service, County member of the newly forming Yakima Community Leadership Coalition, the Yakima Valley Community Foundation, and APIC of Washington, Washington serve as the C3 fiscal sponsor. Without further ado, I'd like to recognize the Asian Pacific Islander Coalition, the Yakima branch. Representing them today is Dory Peralt Baker. Thank you for this wonderful award and recognition of our work there at the Asian Pacific Island Coalition of Yakima Valley. We are people of color, we are following the principles of Yakima Valley, and our work is dedicated to all people of color. So, thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you.
next recipient is the Latino Community Fund of Central Washington. The Latino Community Fund cultivates new leaders, supports cultural and community based nonprofit organizations, and improves the quality of life for all Washingtonians. To achieve its mission and address the needs of Latinos, LCS programs create a vibrant community through civic engagement, health, healthy families, arts, and culture. The Latino Community Fund of Central Washington is one of several chapters connected with the Latino Community Fund of Washington State that informs and engages Latino community members to be more involved in shaping and advocating for environmental and climate justice policies. The Latino Community Fund of Central Washington. I wasn't told to be live. So um, anyways, I just wanted to say thank you. It is a huge honor to receive this award and it's not something that one of us does. We do this as a team. Um, and right now online, I have all of, not all of my team members, but some very strong ones, Giovanni Severino, Lillian Ballesteros, Joshua Hastings, and also our new organizer, Armida Rivera. This is teamwork. This is why we fight. Thank you, Sonia, for telling your story, because that just fuels our advocacy and um, just proves why we need to continue to grow to make positive change. Thank you so much. Thank you, Christina, and we will get your award to you on um, the very near future. In the third and, and final recipient, Homeless Network of Yakima County. The mission of the Homeless Network of Yakima County is to advocate for people who are homeless in order to improve their quality of life, increase public awareness of the issues of homelessness, impact public policy to prevent and end homelessness, the network focuses on achievable strategies to move individuals and families experiencing homeless beyond shelter to permanent housing and self-sufficiency by looking at a comprehensive range of needs and developing the local capacity to the collaborative effort to meet these needs. The third and final recipient, the Homeless Network of Yakima County. Thank you, everyone. On behalf of the 130 organizations, businesses, and community members who worked tirelessly to address the issue of homelessness in Yakima County, um, we're humbled to be a recipient of this award. Thank you. Close with prayer and song. I'd like to recognize a few individuals. First of all, Mr. Garcia for Spanish, Spanish translation and Julie Straw for uh, ASL translation as well. Um, there's a lot of time, energy, and effort put into this event today. And I do want to send a special thank you to the Yakima School District, the Yakima Police Department, the City of Yakima, OIC, the Henry Beauchamp Center. And uh, last but certainly not least, the MLK Planning Committee. They have done a tremendous job this year and in previous years to put on a spectacular event to honor Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. After the closing prayer and closing song, uh, that will conclude our uh, program for today. I can't encourage people enough to take the time today to reflect on where we've been, where we're at, and where we want to go. So without further ado, I'd like to introduce uh, Reverend Pride up here for a closing prayer. Hi guys. We're grateful to be a part uh, of this uh, great celebration. And, uh, I was asked for me and I'm going to do that in just one second. I had a heck of an opportunity to uh, to be, a, I want to say, a uh, bag barrier for Dr. Rath having that 
he became the fourth man of some years back. I think it's, as we know, most of us know that he was right there with Dr. King and Martin and all that. And he was doing a workshop and preaching for young preachers in Portland, and I was a part of that, part of this opinion. I was asked the day he was going to leave, he said, would you take him to the airport and drop him off there in Portland? And I said, sure, I would. And as we were driving, uh, I, I was listening. I asked him, I said, what can you say to I, I your tag community you. uh, that, what that's going through then and what it's going through now? He said, let me tell you a story. He says, one day there was a truck driver who was, uh, was a long haul truck driver. He drove all over the country. And one day uh, something happened where he fell asleep behind the wheel. When he fell asleep, uh, his semi and tractor and all that went over into a ditch and rolled over. Uh, cars behind him saw what had happened and uh, went on to say that they went looking down the seat and yelling, are you okay? And by this time he was climbing out of the cab and, and climbing to the to the to the window part of the truck. He yelled back, yes, I'm okay. And then he, and he and they went on to say, do you want us to get some help? He wants to send somebody back. He said, well, yeah, that'll be fine. And he yelled back. And then, he, yeah, then they yelled back again, what do you want us to do? He said, just tell my boss that I'm on my way back. And Reverend Afton, as he told me that, he said, Clyde, just keep doing what you're doing. And I say to us today, let's keep doing what we're doing. Amen. We love to be at that point. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you, Lord, for all that you've done and all the ones that have put in time and effort and all of their strength to make this day what it already has been. And Lord God, we thank you. We thank you in advance, oh God, that your covering is over this entire valley. And Father, I pray in Jesus' name, you just cover, oh God, with your blood every part of this valley, not only just this valley, but the entire planet. Father, we thank you. Thank you for the strength. Thank you for the wisdom and understanding that you've given those ones that have walked this path before to be able to stand today and say, Dr. King's dream, we see part of the reality of it all. Father, thank you. Bless us now with your presence and power as we leave from this place to not be on taking care until we meet again in Jesus' name. Hi, thank you. Thank you, Reverend Pride. And to close this uh, program out, I'm going to bring up Reverend Trimble to have the closing song. Thank God and thank God for the speaker that made who has given us a charge for us to go back into our various communities and be a light to make it better. Be a light to make it better, and to give hope to those who have lost hope, and to also believe in ourselves, believe in the American dream. At the close of every uh, session, meeting, a church service, as we move forward for justice, truth, and equality for all people. That was an old song that we used to sing that was rooted in our hearts. No matter what the situation faced us, we were willing to go on. It's pretty hard when, I, I remember a time when, when we was in the church, and it was pretty hard that when you know that the enemy is out there waiting to do harm to you. Maybe to sick the dogs on you or to fire hose you. Some of our people lost hope. That's why we was always encouraged with an old three-letter song. Three-letter song. We shall 
overcome. That's all we had. It was dark. But we could always sing that song at the end of whatever we were going through. We shall overcome. So let's join hands as we leave this place. In the process of working throughout the South and going to jail and getting beat and being in mass meetings and singing this one particular song that became the theme song of this movement. It is a powerful song. You can go anywhere in the world today where there is struggle and you will find this song and you will still see people in the streets marching and singing it. It is our gift to the world the world people in struggle. We want to ask you to stand up and cross your right hand over left and sing with us, We Shall Overcome. We shall Happy King Day.